Chapter 19. The Discarnate Young Woman. Doesn't your granddaughter come to the table for meals? I asked Laura, attempting for a more intimate conversation. For the time being, she eats alone, Laura explained. The poor girl is still nervous and disheartened, and we don't share our table with anyone who displays confusion or displeasure. Nervous exhaustion and anxiety emit dense poisonous fluids that automatically blend with nutritional substances. My granddaughter slept heavily for 15 days in the umbral while we watched over her. She should have been put in one of the hospital wards, but she came to stay here under my direct care. I told her I would like to have a visit with this newcomer from the planet. I would be very interested to hear what she had to say. How long had it been since I received any direct news about ordinary life? Laura willingly agreed when I told her my wish. She led me into a comfortable and spacious room where a very pale young woman was resting in a comfortable armchair. She was startled when she saw me. Eloisa, explained Laura. This friend is a brother who returned from the physical realm not too long ago. The young woman gazed at me curiously, although her deep, shadowed eyes betrayed her great effort to concentrate. She greeted me with a wan smile as I introduced myself. You must be very tired, I remarked. Before she could answer, however, Laura tried to spare her any exhausting effort. Eloisa has been restless and afflicted. To a certain degree, her state is certainly understandable. She had tuberculosis for a long time, and it left deep scars on her spirit. However, we must never cease to be optimistic and courageous. I saw the young woman open her very black eyes wide in a futile effort to hold back her tears. Her chest began to spasm violently, and she covered her face with a handkerchief, unable to hold back an anguished sob. Poor girl, said the kind woman, embracing her. Try to get a hold of yourself. These feelings are the result of a faulty religious education, nothing more. You know that your mother will be here shortly, and that you can't count on your fiancé's fidelity. He isn't at all prepared to offer you any kind of sincere spiritual devotion there on earth. He's still a long way from understanding the sublime spirit of illumined love. Of course, he will marry another woman, and it is best that you simply get used to the idea. It wouldn't be fair to insist on his suddenly coming here. Smiling maternally, Laura added, Let's suppose he did come, bending the law. Wouldn't your suffering be harder still? Wouldn't you pay dearly for any part you might have played in his death? You won't lack any devoted friendship and fraternal cooperation to help you become spiritually balanced here. And if you really love the young man, you must seek more inner harmony so that you can be of use to him later. And like I said, your mother will soon be here. The young woman's tears filled me with pity. I decided to change the subject in order to keep her from crying. Where are you from, Eloisa? Laura kept quiet and seemed anxious to see her join in the conversation. The girl dried her tears during a long pause and replied, Rio de Janeiro. You shouldn't cry so, I objected. You should be very happy. After all, you disincarnated only a few days ago, and you are already with your family, without having had to face any storms on the greater journey. Eloisa seemed to cheer up a bit and spoke more calmly. Well, you can't imagine how much I've been suffering. Eight months of fighting tuberculosis, in spite of all the treatments. The sorrow of having infected my loving mother. Besides, I can't describe all that my poor fiancé had to suffer on my account. Now, now, don't say that, remarked Laura with a smile. On earth, we are always under the illusion that no pain is greater than our own. That's pure blindness. There are millions of people facing situations truly cruel when compared to ours. But, Grandma, Arnaldo was so disconsolate and desperate, she answered. All this makes me wonder. Do you really believe what you think you saw? asked Laura in a tender voice. I saw your ex fiance several times during your illness. It was only natural for him to be so deeply affected at seeing your physical body being reduced to ruin. But he isn't ready to understand pure sentiment. 
and will get over his grief very soon. Illuminated love is not for just any human creature, so hold on to your optimism. No doubt you will eventually be able to be of great help to him. But as for the possibility of any conjugal union between you, you'll discover that when you are finally able to travel with us to the spheres of the planet, he will have already married somebody else. I myself was impressed by these remarks, and I noted Eloisa's pained surprise. The convalescing girl didn't know how to react, faced with her grandmother's serenity and common sense. Could that be possible? With an extremely caring gesture, Laura continued, Don't be stubborn or try to contradict me. Seeing that the patient looked like she expected some kind of proof, Laura insisted very gently, Do you remember Maria de Luz, your co-worker who brought you flowers every Sunday? Well, when the doctor confidentially told Arnaldo that there was no hope for healing your physical body, he was deeply grieved but began to surround Maria with different mental vibrations. And now that you're here, their new attitude towards each other won't take long to express itself. Oh, Grandma, how awful. How awful? You need to get used to considering the needs of others. Your ex fiance is an ordinary man, unaware of the sublime beauties of spiritual love. No matter how much you love him, you can't work miracles in him. Self-discovery is the privilege of each human being. Arnaldo will recognize the beauty of your idealism someday, but for the present, he must be left to live through these necessary experiences. I simply won't accept it, complained the young woman, weeping. Maria de Luz, whom I always considered a most faithful friend. Laura, however, smiled and spoke cautiously. Wouldn't it be better to entrust him to the care of a sister? Maria de Luz will always be your spiritual friend, whereas another woman might render your entrance into his heart more difficult for you in the future. I was really surprised, and Eloisa started sobbing again. The kind woman sensed my uneasiness, and perhaps with the purpose of instructing me as well as her granddaughter, she explained, I know what's causing your tears, my little dear. They were born in the uncultivated soil of our millinery selfishness, our undying human self-centeredness. But your grandma isn't saying these things to hurt you, but to wake you up. While Eloisa wept, Laura invited me to go back with her into the living room, remarking that the patient needed to rest. As we sat down, she spoke confidentially. My granddaughter arrived here extremely exhausted. She let her heart get entangled in the web of self-centeredness. In fact, she should be in one of our hospitals, but Assistant Cusero thought it better to place her under our direct care. His decision really pleased me, because my dear Teresa, her mother, will arrive soon. A little patience and will find the right solution. It's just a question of time and peaceful surroundings.'